Today we're talking about the latest corporate buzzword. What is that? Multi-domain operations. Some people say that it is just that, a corporate buzzword. Other proponents of the multi-domain operations are trying real hard to make it a thing. Regardless, it might be here to stay. What are multi-domain operations? Very similar to joint operations, I might say. Let's dive into it and see what some of the experts have to say of it. In this article by FAS.org, it's citing an Army Field Manual Operations, which is FM 3-0, dated October 1, 2022. Multi-domain operations are the combined arms employment of joint and army capabilities to create and exploit relative advantages that achieve objectives, defeat enemy forces, and consolidate gains on behalf of joint force commanders. Employing army and joint capabilities makes use of all available combat power from each domain to accomplish missions at least cost. Multi-domain operations are the army's contribution to joint campaigns, spanning the competition continuum. Below the threshold of armed conflict, multi-domain operations are how army forces accrue advantages and demonstrate readiness for conflict, deterring adversaries while reassuring allies and partners. During conflict, they are how army forces close with and destroy the enemy, defeat enemy formations, seize critical terrain, and control populations and resources to deliver sustainable political outcomes. That is a fantastic word salad. What does it mean to normal people? I'm glad that nobody asked. Let's get into it. When we talk about, let's break this down into the different points that this brings up. When we look at conflict, it is incredibly complex all the way from subsurface all the way up through space. We have all the meat in between. And there's a lot of assets available to commanders and joint commanders to achieve organizational and operational success in theaters. Now, how does that look? It means that if there are strategic targets that a ground force, maybe a small unit team and operational detachment or some kind of special operations team can identify a high value target, we have a lot of goodies at our disposal that we can use. We can use precision fires. We can use uh, the Hellfire that has the missiles on that, that has the, uh, the knife blades on it, the Jinsu Hellfire. We can use a Tomahawk missile fired from a submarine off the coast. We can do a myriad of different things to achieve that organizational success. There are a lot of domains that we fight in, the newest one being cyberspace. Cyberspace is one of those threats that is incredibly vulnerable, especially if you look at an infrastructure for a country. You're looking at the electrical, the medical infrastructure of, of that country. If you can compromise that, you can do some serious damage. If you can start shutting off power, if you can start messing with dams, if you can do any of those things, you can seriously cripple a lot of the country and make it very difficult for production, transportation, and a lot of different things to happen for that country to be able to fight back. Now, let's talk about the part, the peacetime aspect of multi-domain operations. When we're talking about deterring adversaries while assuring allies and partners, that means that we are having aircraft, we're having Danish F-16s fly with American F-22s and F-35s. We are having the... EFP battle group in Latvia train with German, French, Italian, US, Polish forces along the Russian border to deter the adversaries because we put out a lot of propaganda videos, we being the NATO countries, put out a lot of propaganda videos that are pretty intimidating. When you have a volley fire happening from a well-coordinated armor uh, assault, and you, you see those direct fire control measures that employed it's pretty intimidating especially when you add the maneuver aspect of it being able to shoot at night being able to have an mrs update and that's just at the at the individual level that we're not talking tactical strategic level but those sort of shore of shore of force things they have regional impacts they have those political implications where you think man those are some pretty well-trained forces we may not necessarily want to engage with that 
when we transition into the direct the two-way live fire that real tactical scenario where there is an there's a hot conflict that's when this multi-domain thing is going to shine is it joint operations is it multi-domain i don't really care what it is is it is what it is it's having the maturity to understand that you have assets available in your battle space and being able to use them effectively don't just let the ships sit off the coast twiddling their thumbs doing donuts out at sea when they could be launching tomahawks they could be launching helicopters to go perform logistics duties or recover down pilots or whatever the case may be there's a lot of assets in and fully integrating those into your formation are going to pay dividends if a conflict goes hot hopefully this was insightful i'll see you guys in the next one